Welcome everyone to my presentation. My name is Pratik. Today I'll talk about our recent work on two round adaptively secured MPC from Isogenies LPN or CDH. This is a joint work with Navid from UC Berkeley and Visa Research, with Hart from Fujitsu Lab and Shikhar from ETH Zurich and Visa Research. Today we will talk about secure computation. We consider the two party setting. There are two parties who have their private inputs X and Y. They want to jointly compute a function f on their inputs. To do so, they run a protocol pi on their inputs and outputs the protocol output. The protocol should satisfy two properties. Mainly, it should be correct. That is, the function output should be same as protocol output. And the protocol should be secure. That is, the protocol should not leak anything about the private inputs besides the output. The works of Yao, Goldreich, Mikali, Vigdason, Beaver, Mikali, Rogovi presented the first few protocols for secure computation. Since then, secure computation has found numerous applications in privacy-preserving machine learning, blockchains, and many more. In this work, we consider the primitive of oblivious transfer, or OT. It is a two-party protocol between a receiver and a sender. The receiver has an input choice bit B, and sender has two, choice, uh, two messages, M0 and M1. By performing the OT protocol, the receiver obtains the message of his choice. OT security ensures that a corrupt receiver should not know the other message uh, M1 minus B and a corrupt sender should not know the choice bit B. This simple primitive suffices for general secure computation. It's complete. We also know that round optimal OT enables round optimal secure computation. Hence, in this work we focus on obtaining round optimal OT protocols. OT also has other applications like private set intersection and zero knowledge. And in this work, uh, we want to achieve universal composability security uh, based on Kennedy's Rand Kennedy's model. So we are going to focus on UC security. So let me briefly recall the security properties required from our OT protocols. Firstly, the corrupt receiver should not know M1 minus B and the corrupt sender should not know B. To get simulation based security, we need probabilistically polynomial time simulator uh, sim such that it can extract a corrupt sender and a corrupt receiver's input given the trapdoors of the setup string or some extra power. We model the security of the protocol by considering a PPT algorithm simulator. The simulator interacts with the real world al uh, adversary algorithm to create an ideal world adversarial view given access to the functionality. We say that security holds if the view of the adversary in the real world is indistinguishable from the view in the ideal world when it interacts with a simulator sim. We also consider adaptive security, which is the strongest security model. In the setting, the adversary can adaptively corrupt any of the honest parties before, during or after protocol execution. The adversary obtains the internal state of the honest party upon corruption. In such a case, the simulated honest party view has to be opened consistently to the honest party's input when the party gets corrupted in the ideal world. That is non-trivial and really hard to achieve and that is the focus of our uh, paper. And we also consider malicious corruptions where the corrupt party can arbitrarily deviate from the protocol. So let me briefly discuss the current works on adaptively secure MPC protocols. It is known that Constant round adaptively secure MPC is impossible from black box simulation due to Gerg and Sahai. So the works of Gerg et al. and the recent work by Chakrabarti et al. construct constant round adaptively secure MPC protocols from non-black box techniques. In the setup model, the works of Kennedy et al. and subsequently Choi et al. and Garai et al. constructed uh, linear round protocols using the GMW paradigm. The work of Hazai et al. showed that public key encryption with oblivious ciphertext uh, generation is the minimal assumption required for adaptively secure MPC. However, these protocols are not uh, round optimal. So the focus uh, in this work is to obtain two round MPC, which is adaptively secure in the setup string model. In the setting, there are a few works which used IO. Uh, and finally, there are only two works which construct 
uh, two round adaptively secured MPC from standard assumptions. The work by Ben Muda et al. Uh, constructed it from DDH, LWE, and quadratic residuosity in the common reference ring model. The recent work by Kennedy et al. constructed uh, uh, the same, uh, like constructed, uh, achieved the same result from DDH in the common random string model. But these are like only three assumptions that we know from. So we ask the question whether can we construct it from more assumptions. So we focus on constructing uh, the MPC protocol from other assumptions. So we demonstrate that a two round OT with indistinguishability based security and uh, something called oblivious receiver message sampleability implies uh, two round adaptively secured MPC. So we call this OT primitive as RIOT. And this is a very weaker OT primitive compared to adaptively secure OT. Uh, and then we build RIOT from CDH, LPN and isogenies. So this yields the first two round adaptively secured MPC protocol from CDH, LPN and isogenies in the malicious setting. And in the semi honest setting, uh, we construct the first uh, two round adaptively secure MPC protocol from LPN and isogenies. Uh, ben Muda et al. constructed it from CDH in the semi honest setting. And uh, to be more specific, uh, for isogenies, we construct it from group actions uh, which can be instantiated using the seaside and the sea fish assumption. As a side result, we also construct the first non committing encryption from LPN in the setup string model. So let us briefly go through so let me briefly go through the techniques let me briefly recall the security properties of indistinguishability based ot firstly the receiver corrupt receiver should not know uh, m1 minus b and the corrupt sender should not know b so this can be modeled uh, as we can see here that uh, suppose uh, the receiver's choice bit is zero then it should not distinguish between uh, a sender's message when m1 is 0 from a case where m1 is 1. And for the sender, uh, for a corrupt sender, uh, it should not be able to distinguish when the receiver's choice bit is 0 from the case where the receiver's choice bit is 1. So this is IoT or indistinguishability based OT. Next, we will add sampleability properties for the sender and the receiver message. So uh, we will consider the OT protocol in the CRS model where uh, the setup string consists of the CRS and it is generated along with the trapdoor. So the trapdoor will be used by the simulator, uh, which we will see later. So firstly, uh, let me describe receiver sampleability property. We, requ we require that there exists a probabilistically polynomial time uh, algorithm OB1 which obliviously samples a receiver message PR. Okay. So now a simulator can honestly construct a receiver message using the OT1 algorithm and the simulator can claim that this PR on the right hand, right hand side is obliviously sampled. In order to do that, it needs to give a randomness for the like a uh, randomness, which is consistent with the oblivious generation of PR. So we require another algorithm INV invert one, which uh, inverts the randomness of the like simulator, which was used to generate the actual OT message. And it gives out randomness, which is consistent with the oblivious sampling of the receiver message. And the two distributions of the receiver message and the sampling randomness should be computationally indistinguishable and that is the receiver sampleability property. Next we need sender sampleability property. We require that there exists probabilistically polynomial time algorithm OB2 which allows obliviously sampling a sender message PS corresponding to bit 1 minus W. The adversary provides M0 and M1 as input messages and the algorithm is parameterized by the adversary's chosen branch uh, one minus B. Now a simulator can honestly construct 
a sender message using the OT2 message algorithm. The simulator can claim that it was obliviously sampled. And in order to do so, the simulator is required to provide the sampling randomness, which he obtains by using the INV2 algorithm. So that inverts uh, the sender's honestly generated sender's uh, message randomness into a sampling randomness. And the two distributions of the sender message receive a message and the sampling randomness should be in computationally indistinguishable by the sender sampleability property. So these are the two uh, properties that we need. And we denote an indistinguishability based OT with receiver sampleability as RIOT. And we denote an indistinguishability based OT with both sender and receiver sampleability as RSIOT. Now we will discuss our techniques in the CRS model. We start off with RIOT. We show that RIOT with a few other primitives imply RSIOT. These primitives are equivocal and obliviously sampleable gobbling and obliviously sampleable commitment scheme. These are all instantiable from one way functions in the CRS model. Our work also shows that RSIOT suffices for trapdoor simulatable PKE in CRS model. Next, we construct semi adaptive OT from RSIOT, uh, equivocal commitment scheme, and obliviously sampleable gobbling and trapdoor simulatable PKE. Combined with the result of CDMW, we also get non committing encryption from trapdoor simulatable PKE, which can be obtained from RIOT. Finally, we apply the result of BLPV to get an adaptively secured MPC protocol from RIOT. Finally, we show that uh, RIOT can be constructed from CDH, LPN and group actions in the CRS model. So let me uh, briefly go through the building blocks. We require garbling schemes. A garbling scheme consists of three algorithms. It takes in input a circuit C and randomness R. It outputs a garble circuit uh, GC and the encoding table EN. The encoding algorithm takes an input, the encoding information and input X and it outputs the encoded uh, input a, a capital X. The evaluation algorithm takes the uh, garble circuit and the encoded input and it computes the output Y. Correctness of garbling ensures that Y is same as C of X. Privacy of the garbling scheme ensures that the encoded input does not leak anything about the in private input X. This is captured using a PPT simulator which outputs the garble circuit and the encoded input given the output Y without knowing what is X. An adversary cannot distinguish a simulated garble circuit and a simulated encoded input from an honestly generated one. We also require equivocal garbling property where the simulator generates the simulated garble circuit and the encoded input. Then later on it gets the input X and it has to produce the encoding information and the garbling state. So given these information, an adversary cannot distinguish these from an honestly generated one. Such garbling schemes are instrumental for adaptive security and they can be constructed from one-way functions as shown by Kennedy et al. Finally, we need oblivious garbling schemes. Here an obliviously generated garble circuit always outputs Y and can be sampled using an algorithm called OGB algorithm with randomness R. And there exists a randomness inversion algorithm which outputs randomness R prime such that an honestly generated garble circuit with randomness R can be shown to be obliviously garbled using random, randomness R prime. The difference from equivocal garbling is that the adversary does not get the entire encoding information since the garble circuit is supposed to be obliviously garbled and there is no encoding information when the garble circuit is obliviously garbled. And uh, the work by Lindell et al. Uh, obtained oblivious garbling schemes from one-way functions. Next, I will talk about commitment schemes in the CRS model. There are three algorithms. The setup algorithm generates the CRS and the trapdoor TD. The commitment algorithm generates the commitment C to message M using randomness R. The verify algorithm decomputes the commitment to check it. The commitment should satisfy binding and hiding properties. Uh, finally, we also need oblivious sampleability property where an honestly generated commitment can be claimed to be generated obliviously by inverting the randomness. 
So oblivious and we know that obliviously sampleable commitments can be obtained from one way functions due to now at all. Now I will go through our um, RSIOT construction from RIOT. We will try to construct our RSIOT uh, using an obliviously sampleable gobbling scheme, obliviously sampleable commitment scheme and RIOT. The receiver commits to its choice bit B using randomness R to form a commitment C. It computes RIOT receiver algorithm uh, using the bits of R as choice bits. The sender gobbles the circuit uh, CIR. So the circuit has hard coded inside it the commitment C, a bit E and the message M. It takes in randomness uh, R and outputs M. It sees a commitment to bit E using randomness R. Now the sender will gobble this circuit CIR with E, C and M, E as hard coded inputs. Right. And um, he runs this for both E is equal to 0 and 1. This way the sender computes two garbage circuits GC0 and GC1 which encrypts M0 and M1 within it. The receiver should be able to evaluate GCB correctly and obtain MB if C is a correct commitment to B using randomness R. The sender also computes OT sender message using the encoding information of the garbage circuits so the receiver gets the wire labels corresponding to the bits of RI. The sender sends the garbage circuits and the RIOT sender messages. Now the receiver decrypts the wire labels for GCB corresponding to randomness R. It evaluates GCB to obtain MB. Indistinguishability based security for a uh, receiver follows from RIOT receiver security and hiding of commitment scheme. And the sender security follows from binding of the commitment scheme, uh, RIOT sender security and privacy of the gobbling scheme. Uh, also, we can see that this protocol satisfies receiver oblivious sampleability because it follows from oblivious sampling of commitment scheme and receiver oblivious sampleability of the RIOT messages. However, uh, we cannot argue sender oblivious sampleability since the sender is committed to the RIOT sender messages. Even if we use the oblivious gobbling scheme uh, instead of a regular gobbling scheme here, the adversary can distinguish uh, since the encoding information is committed uh, inside the RIOT sender messages. If we use equivocal garble circuit, then the output of the garble circuit needs to be set at the time of the gobbling. It cannot be changed when inverting the randomness. And hence the RIOT sender messages will again help in distinguishing an obliviously sampled sender message from an actual one. So we have to modify uh, the previous construction. So in the new construction or the fi our final construction, the receiver algorithm remains the same. The sender algorithm now consists of two levels of gobbling. The sender gobbles the circuit CIR. Uh, the circuit CIR has hard coded inside it the commitment C and a bit E. It takes in randomness R and some message capital T as input and outputs capital T if C is a commitment to bit E using randomness R. So this is the outer garble circuit. There is, an, uh, there is an inner garble circuit GC prime that is going to encrypt the sender's message uh, M. So it takes an input a commitment C prime, randomness S and the message M. And GC uh, E prime uh, outputs M if C prime is a commitment to zero using randomness using some randomness s so this is the circuit cir prime now the sender computes a commitment to zero using using randomness s and it computes the encoded input for ce prime in gce prime as te the sender computes the outer encoding of te and sends it to the receiver it also sends the inner encoding of se and me to the receiver the sender also computes RIOT sender messages on the RI bits, uh, uh, RI bits of receiver. The two inner garble circuits uh, and the two outer garble circuits are also sent to the receiver. Now the receiver decrypts the OT messages to obtain wire labels for RI in GCB. 
it has obtained the wire labels for TB already from the sender's message. Uh, it computes uh, GCB, like the outer garble circuit corresponding to bit B, to obtain uh, TB, which is the inner encoding of C prime B, right? And it evaluates the inner uh, GCB prime on TB and the inner encodings of SB and MB to obtain capital MB. So we can uh, again uh, claim that receiver oblivious sampleability follows from oblivious sampling of commitment scheme and uh, also from the receiver sampleability of the RIOT protocol. This is similar to our uh, previous construction. Sender oblivious sampleability follows from oblivious sampling of C prime, equivocal garbling, and oblivious sampleability of the inner garble circuit. So here we require equivocal garbling uh, property from the outer garble circuit and oblivious sampleability from the inner garble circuit. Suppose the receiver's choice bit is B, which can be obtained from distinguished dependence simulation. To obliviously sample the sender message corresponding to bit 1 minus B, the sender obliviously garbles the inner GC prime 1 minus B and provides obliviously generated encoded inputs instead of correct inner encodings for branch 1 minus B or the garbles in a in a garbage circuit 1 minus B. If we use the Lindell Pinkas construction, then these are random values instead of uh, obliviously generated encoded inputs. So now an adversary cannot distinguish between an honestly sampled sender message from an obliviously sampled one since in both the real and idle worlds, the outer garbage circuit for 1 minus B branch always outputs a bot or a junk value. This holds true even if the adversary obtains the outer garbling randomness due to uh, due to the equivocal property of the outer garbage circuit. So the simulator can claim that 1 minus B branch was obliviously sampled and this trick of two layering of garbling allows us to obtain uh, RSIOT from RIOT. For more details, I would suggest you to uh, check our paper. Uh, so uh, let me summarize uh, what we discussed. So in this talk, we just saw this construction that is highlighted. For the rest of the protocols, I would refer to the paper. In this work, we constructed two round adaptively maliciously secured MPC from RIOT and instantiated RIOT from CDH, LPN and isogenics. To end with an open with two open questions, what is the minimal assumption for two round maliciously secure RIOT or more general, uh, what is the minimal assumption for two round adaptively maliciously secure MPC protocol? Thank you.